Here are my camera settings and editing process to get the most out of the DJI Pocket 3. The settings that I use and editing process may or may not work for how you intend to use this camera, but if you like the results that I'm getting, this is what I do. If you swipe from the right on the screen, the first thing we're gonna do is hit Pro Mode because that gives you access to all of the additional settings. Starting with exposure, I'm gonna set it to manual. The shutter speed is set to 1 50th of a second and the ISO range is set between 50 and 200. Next up is white balance. That's gonna be different for every scene at every different time of the day in every different environment. So that setting will never be the same exactly. But I typically leave it at 5600 and just adjust it in editing from there. You also can leave this on auto if you're not good at eyeballing the color temperature of your environment. Glamour effect is turned off. That gives you the ability to do things like skin smoothing, which is something that I'm not really into. Um, and for color, this is important. It is set to D-Log M 10 bit. That's one major upgrade that this DJI Packet has over the previous generations that it allows you to shoot in 10 bit. And of course, D-Log M allows you to have greater flexibility in post when you're doing color grading, which you'll see later. Focus mode controls the autofocus and I usually just leave it on continuous unless there's a situation where I want to use single shot autofocus. All of you showcasing the product, you can put it on product showcase. And the last setting is image adjustment. And what I do here is I put the sharpness on negative two and noise reduction on negative two. I basically turn both of those things down because I don't want the camera adding any unnecessary sharpness or smoothing because I can do all of that in editing. And if I let the camera do it, then I can't take it out after. And I generally don't like really sharp images. I like detailed images, but not extra sharp images. And that's the difference. So that's it for the general settings. And if you swipe up from the bottom, you can choose the resolution and frame rate, which of course is 4K and frame rate is 24 frames a second. Now, if you use those settings and you go outside, the very first thing you're gonna notice is that the footage is way too bright. That means you're gonna need a set of ND filters. And for me, ND filters are something that is not optional when you're filming. Unless you're in a low light situation, ND filters are the only way that you'll have full control of all of your camera settings. So every camera that I have, every time I'm filming, I'm using ND filters unless I'm in a situation that's dark enough to not need one. So that's it for camera settings. So let's get into editing the footage. So I edit and color grade all of my content in DaVinci Resolve, but the same basic principles apply no matter what editing software that you use. DaVinci Resolve is like a river. It starts here and it ends here. And you add however many nodes you want in between and they always apply in that order. The order that things are in affects the final result. This is my typical generic setup for color grading. The first node is for exposure. The second node is for color. The third node is for any conversions. And the fourth node is if I want to add any special effects. Also, if you plan on using any creative LUTs, I will put that after the conversion node. So the first thing we're going to do in this process is convert the footage from log. On DJI's website and pretty much any other camera's website, they give you a conversion LUT to convert your footage from log. So in the conversion node, we're going to turn on the LUT from DJI. Now this look that you get is not color grading, is not anything special. This is what the camera footage looks like. All this node did was convert the footage from log to Rec. 709. So nothing special has happened. This is the camera's colors. Now from this point forward is where your personal tastes apply. So now if we go to the first node, it is exposure and contrast, and that is the only adjustments that I make in this node. So if I turn this node on and off, you can see that I increase the contrast by bringing down the exposure a bit, I darken the shadows a bit, I raise the highlights and midtones a bit. I'm really just trying to balance the image out in a way that looks good to me. Now this may be different for everyone, but for me, this is pretty much how I like this image to be exposed. Maybe you want it brighter, maybe you want it darker, maybe you want to bring up the shadows, maybe you don't. It's all up to you. There is no right or wrong way to do it but this is the general process that I take. The next tab is very subjective, which is the color tab. And these are the color adjustments that I made. This might look good to you, this might not look good to you, but this is all personal preference. I adjusted the different tone curves, I adjusted the hues, the saturations, the luminous values. I added some colors to the highlights, to the shadows, to the mid-tones. I basically just pushed and pulled the image color-wise to get the image to look the way that I wanted to look. If you're using some type of creative look, then you might not have to do as much in this process because it's already doing it for you and you just have to make little minor adjustments. But this is basically why I do all of the color adjustments for the color grade. At this point, you can call it a day, but I also like to use a plugin called Dehancer. Dehancer allows you to do the entire color grading process within just the plugin, but I know everyone doesn't have Dehancer, so I want to show you what it looks like when you break it down 
without any plugins. So the look that you see now is no plugins. In Dehancer, you can apply different film stocks and film compressions and print films and all types of things. Um, but in this, I'm going to show you how I just use it to apply some film grain and some film bloom. Maybe you don't like the film grain. I'm sure on YouTube, this doesn't look that great. Uh, you're not seeing what I can actually see here. So that's a little tricky, but the bloom gives it a nice little softer look where you can see the highlights are blooming out you know, around the door and around the edges and things like that. So that's why I add any extra effects. If you're gonna add any other plugins that you may have, or if you wanna just go crazy with all the different things you can do within Dehancer, this is where you do it. If we take the same color grade and apply it to a few other clips, you will see that it looks pretty decent. You just have to do a few little minor adjustments. Like this clip here is too dark, so I can go to the exposure tab and increase the brightness a little bit. Maybe bring down the highlights a little, and that's pretty much it. This clip is probably also a little too dark in the shadows, so if I can raise that up a little bit, and the midtones, and possibly adjust the contrast a little bit, and the white balance, we can warm it up a little, and that's the result. And so with just a few little tweaks, there you go. That's pretty much how I shoot and edit with just about any camera that I have, and I'm very pleased with the DJI Pocket 3. Having a bigger sense in this camera really makes a difference, and also the 10-bit codec allows you to push the footage further than you could with any of the previous generations. I hope this video was helpful, and if you have any other questions, comments, or concerns about the Pocket 3, leave them in the comments down below. Follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you guys in the next one.